listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Some fun things happening this summer. You can learn about church work, learn about becoming a pastor, a deaconess, or other church worker as well. Hey, hey. Lots of opportunities here in St. Louis and in Fort Wayne. We're going to chat about those today. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, the Reverend Micah Glenn. He's Director of Recruitment and Enrollment at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Welcome back, Pastor Glenn. Good morning. Yeah, your introduction is so flawless. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's like it. we a, do it every a day. Good <laughs> intro. Yeah, fellow podcasters. <laughs> you have a podcast too at Concordia Seminary. Uh, yeah, we do under the fig tree, and uh, we have a, a brief introduction. I could never say that many things over and over, and I, whenever I sign off, I kind of sign off the same way, and I always try to tie in something that a guest has said into the sign off. Yeah, because we always ask for a last piece of advice, which, which makes it a little tricky, I guess. Yeah, but you guys were so coordinated it's like knock it out you, you take notes i like that yeah. so there, <laughs> well we are so glad to have you here today and to learn about what's happening at concordia seminary this summer particularly for high school students we yeah. have a program called vocatio is that right that is right yeah and and so if you're listening it is vocat's a latin phrase for vocation for all these different callings in life that god gives us and in particular While we learn about the vocation of being brothers and sisters in christ together we also try to encourage them to think about church work vocations as well, pastor, deaconess, teacher, DCE, and the like. And so it's a, it's a fun, exciting week, and it's always a joy to, to spend that week with young people and figuring out where they're at in their life and how can we help them move forward. So what are some of the things that happen at Vocatio that help students discern what all of these vocations actually mean? Vocatio has grown over the last couple of years, so we spend the first couple of days just getting to know each other, and it's exciting for, especially for young people who are coming across the country who might come from a small community that might not have a lot of peers. And so to be able to come to like peers, like in their church is what I should mm-hmm. say, to come together and, you know, just learn that they're not alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we spend that week. We've started last summer going to Camp Wartburg, Naloma, oh. National Lutheran Outdoor Camp, spending the day there. They learn some leadership things. Mm-hmm. Have some fun. And then on Monday, we, we begin with content. We bring the Concordias in to talk about their programs, what they have to offer. And then they also provide some content presentations. I usually ask them to present on their favorite topic. Just, you know, I don't want to burden these <laughs> diligent men with summer work and have to do something <laughs> new. So just teach your favorite subject. Leave some time for questions. But I always ask every presenter at the beginning if you could just take five minutes and share what led to you becoming a church worker? And that's something we do on Under the Fig Tree because, you know, everybody has a slightly different path- pathway, but some of them are similar. And you never know when when your story is going to resonate with somebody else who's thinking, well, how can God use me? And then you hear somebody with a similar story who God is using to, you know, do wonderful things. And then you're like, oh, well, maybe I can. And so they teach some theology, but they also share their life stories, which is incredible. That sounds familiar. Yeah, it does. Like every Friday on the coffee hour. <laughs> it, it's a, you know, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, just just share your stories. It's wonderful. Is is that something that happens every Friday on the on the coffee hour? I said apart to serve. Yeah, so yeah. to serve on the coffee hour every Friday. I need share to church worker stories every week. Listen more often. I need to stop picking my favorite. <laughs> oh, don't we do that with all of our podcasts? You just pick yeah. your favorite subject and you listen to that. All right. It's true. I mean, I do that with Under the Fig Tree, so oh, it's only hey, fair. Listen, I, I get it. <laughs> well, yeah, I, oh, you always, like there's like a steady listenership, and then you you know when one is going to go through the like oh, when we have yeah. Doctor Colbon. I know that oh, one's going to listen to big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on purpose. <laughs> we have some fun on the coffee hour too. Yeah. It's true. We also get a little nerdy, which mm-hmm. like studying and, and looking at history. So it sounds like students get to do some studying, yeah. some learning when they're at Vocatio as well. A hundred percent. Meeting with professors, learning. In addition to learning, what other things happen at Vocatio? Time for worship and time for some recreation? Absolutely. So every day begins together breakfast and then a presentation. But every day we go to chapel. Chapel still runs throughout the summer the seminary at 9.30, the Lord's Supper on Wednesday, so we get an opportunity to do that together. I do leave intentional breaks at particular times, usually like after lunch so that, you know, they don't eat lunch after a long morning, and then you get that late afternoon presentation and they're falling asleep (laughs) on you. So I let them go, stretch their legs, run around, (laughs) come back for one more, and we have evening devotions every year. Last year, and so when I began vocatio it was, it was slightly smaller last year we had nearly 70 high schoolers and that was 
more than twice as many as we had the year before. <laughs> and awesome. uh, I had some Concordia University students come and be counselors. And we're repeating that again this year. And some of them are pre-deaconess. Most of them are pre-seminary. And so we've we've met on Zoom. I've, I've encouraged them to think about an evening devotion that they'd like to give. So maybe now this year, for the first year, the counselors will get an opportunity to stretch their legs and, uh, you know, try their stuff <laughs> and, and give an evening devotion. I, it'll be great. No matter, I tell them all the time, it's just an evening devotion. This isn't, you know, a lasting thing, but, you know, try it out. Um, and then, well, this year, uh, yeah, we're, we're actually going to a cards game. Uh, I'm always trying to tweak things a little bit without changing the meat of the program. But, you know, there's there's always a little time and a little room for fun. And well, I, I don't know how people feel about certain. They're not great seats, but but it is the Cardinals <laughs> game and we are going one in the evenings. It'll be fantastic. Yeah. 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 It's always fun to just experience culture in a place that maybe some kids have never been to. Well, and we, we've tried different things. We went to the zoo. But if you if you've never been to St. Louis in late June, it's very hot. I can't. I want. I. I, t- yep. I always send a warning. Like dress appropriately. It's going to be blazing hot. It'll be very humid. Drink a lot of water. Yeah. We went to the arch one day because you have to. Well, they say they like it, but then if you go to the arch and you don't go to the museum, if you don't go up, oh yeah. I mean, you're done in like 15 minutes. I yeah. love the arch. I take it for granted every day that I see it, but there's only so much to do if you're not going to do this stuff. And then there's like things like city museum, but. Mm-hmm. That's risky. You and so far as in there, you can that's, lose that, people in that's there. what I'm, I'm saying. Like, to go there. <laughs> and, you know, I love these kids and they're not my kids. And I don't want to have to tell somebody's parent, we couldn't find your son or your daughter for three hours. We're really sorry. I guess I just don't want to have to go do that. So it's a fun place, though. Yeah, it is incredible. Yeah. 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 So why is it important to bring these kids together for this type of experience while they're still in high school? And so, you know, we we've been thinking about this and you know if you think about the modern way kids are encouraged to think about future careers right i i would say now by middle school you know kids are taking standardized tests to see what subjects they might have talent for and then they get encouraged to pursue that and on all of these standardized tests at least when i was in high school back in the early late 90s almost at early 90s late (laughs) 90s early 2000s church worker was never on that list yeah and so it's not, and so they can go through school and never be encouraged to at least think about that. And so the very first question I ask every group is, who's thinking about church work? And I remember my first vocatio, it was the first summer out of COVID. So I think a lot of students early just came because it was something to do. So I, when I asked that question, one hand kind of went halfway up and then went halfway and went back down because nobody else was going to raise their hand. Um, but now I asked that question and, and about half the hands have gone up last summer. And so we just need to be putting in front of young people that not only is it a viable career, but it, it's worthwhile, it's worthy, and, uh, it's, and it's great. And that's why I ask people to share their stories, to share the joys that you've had as a pastor or a deaconess. And even the challenges, because sometimes in those challenges, you get to learn something about yourself. You definitely get to learn something about others, and then you get to wor- learn about how God works in this world in spite of us sometimes. And so it's just a, you just, just put it before them and let them uh, consider it because, you know, a lot of times when you do that, it, it, it plants a little seed. Yeah. What have you heard from students who've participated in the past? Yeah. So just last year, one young man who is, and I love it because I get to know them personally, but this young man's name is Uriel. I think he had just gotten done with eighth grade last year. He signed up to come back this year. So I'll, I'll Look forward to seeing him again. But towards the end of the week, he came up to me. He said, Pastor Glenn, I just wanted to tell you how much joy and how much fun I've had being here. He's like, cause he came with the group. He's, he said, you can ask everybody in the group. I never smile. But since I've been here, I can't stop smiling. <laughs> and he's like, I just want to thank you for doing this for us and for making this opportunity available to us be, because he said it changed his life. And just it's one of those things where, you know, I'm just a recruiter at the seminary. Like, so on the one hand, I'm just doing my job and I do really (laughs) love what I'm doing. Right. But you, you never know every summer, the group is going to be slightly different and you get a young man who maybe at first is just coming to a thing because some of his friends are coming in now, at least for a week, his life has changed a little bit. And that's who gets to do that for their job. I mean, what a blessing. What are some of your favorite moments 
advocates here. I know that's probably the story you just told is probably one of them. But what are some of your other favorite moments? It's definitely one of them. And it hasn't quite happened just yet. Because I could, I mean, there are a ton of them conversations, other conversations I've had with students. But one of the the young man whose hand kind of went halfway up and then went down quickly, his name is Harry Robbins. He's finishing his freshman year at Concordia Chicago in the pre-seminary program. And he was one of my first guys. And he came back every summer. And this summer he's coming back to be a counselor. So to walk alongside him from his the end of his freshman year all the way through college where, you know, Harry reached out to me when he was applying to Concordia is asking me, well, what should I major in and all these other things. And then when I got to text him and said, hey, do you want to come back this year and be a counselor? And to see the response and see his excitement for that and just to watch him grow is uh, remarkable. And so it's not one particular moment, but Harry's kind of growth <laughs> uh, in, on this pathway is something that I, I refer to all the time because, you know, it's always going to be like, you're always going to have like a handful of guys, right? And Harry's by, for sure one of mine. And it's just been remarkable to see him grow into a young man. Yeah. A vocatio for high school students taking place June 22nd through the 29th at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. What do we need to know to apply? Yeah. And so the the registration is online, csl.edu. If you go to admissions and visits, you'll see vocatio high school. There's another event called vocatio retreat. The registration is $100, but that pays for the entire programming. I always encourage people to, to bring some pocket change because of caldies and things that are close. <laughs> but yeah, just it's, just fill it out. Uh, when we did this last year, I felt bad because registration was completely full. We're, we're close. And so if you're listening and you're thinking about it, register now because I imagine by the first week of May, we'll probably be at capacity. And I, I always, it's always a little bit of a stinker when you have to tell somebody maybe next summer. We only have so much space. And so it's almost full, not quite full. But if you're a middle school student, this is something to think about for future summers. Yeah. And if you're getting finished with eighth grade, that's a change I made a couple of years ago. So if you're finishing eighth grade and you, you're thinking about it, come and join us because you can. And and if you've just graduated high school, I, I just try to make the peer group as, as broad as possible. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, finishing eighth grade, just graduating high school come and check us out. And even if you're not, if you're graduating, you're going to be an accountant or something like that, come hang out with us so we can change your minding. (laughs) And you get to stay on campus? On campus, in the dorms. It's a beautiful campus. If you've never been to CSL before, you're in for a treat. CSL.edu. Our guest today, the Reverend Michael Glenn, Director of Recruitment and Enrollment, Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Thanks so much for sharing with us about Vocatio taking place at Concordia Seminary June 22nd through the 29th. Thanks for taking the time and for helping us promote. We appreciate it. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Eddie Bates. I'm Sarah Gossett.